Bless you, Jesus. The word of the Lord says in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 22. Then Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea, and they moved out into the desert of Shur. They traveled in, the, in this desert for three days without finding any water. When they came to the oasis of Mara, the water was too bitter to drink. So they called the place Mara, which means bitter. Then the people complained and turned against Moses. What are we going to drink, they demanded. So Moses cried out to the Lord for help, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. Moses threw it into the water, and this made the water good to drink. It was there at Mara that the Lord had set before them the following decree as a standard to test their faithfulness unto him. The Lord had just performed a miracle for the people of Israel. He had just brought them through the Red Sea. He had opened the waters in their favor, and they walked on dry land. He had just done miracle after miracle for them, and they had seen his hand move in a great way in their lives. God did a great thing among them. He had delivered them from slavery. God had taken them out of the place of control and belittlement. God had opened the sea in their favor. He had done great things right before their very eyes. God had made a way where there was no way. Come on, somebody say amen. God had not only opened the waters for them, but he also defeated the enemy right in front of them. God had just given them a miracle. Now I want you to remember what God has done in your life. Maybe there was a moment in your life where God had just done a miracle for you. He had just answered your prayer. Maybe he had just brought unity back into your family. Maybe he had just given you that raise. Maybe he had just given you the man you've been calling out for, you've been praying for. Maybe he gave you that wife you've been praying for. He had just shown up in your favor. He had just brought your child home. He just made it happen for you when it looked like it was impossible. He just finished doing a great miracle in your life. And he had just finished doing great and powerful things in your family. Now after the miracle, what happens? We make promises. We say, Lord, I'll show up. We start serving in a great capacity. We're at every service, at every event, at every prayer gathering, at every Bible study. We want to be at everything because we're so grateful unto God. Do you remember, church? We stay and we help clean up after the events. We stay and help with the children in the nursery. We make promises to God and to the leaders and to the pastors. We give our word that we will change and be better. We give our word that we will tithe and we will give our offering. We show so much gratitude for everything that God has done in our lives. There's an attitude of gratitude we serve with so much thanksgiving unto God because he has done such great things in our lives. We're so grateful to him. We're thankful that we want to do everything we can to show our gratitude. And no matter how much we do, we feel like it's not enough, so we do more. We serve, we give, we cook, we bake. We arrive early. We show up every time they need us. We praise, we clean. And we're the first ones there and the last ones to go because we're so grateful unto God after we receive the miracle that we've been asking for, after we receive the breakthrough that we've been calling on to God for, after we receive a blessing, after we receive an increase in our finances, we begin to give, we begin to serve. And we're so grateful unto God. But what happens when you're attacked again? What happens when the enemy comes again and tries to defeat you? 
The people of God had seen great miracles, had seen great move of God in their lives. They had seen the waters open. They walked on dry land. They even saw the waters drown their enemy. They had seen all of these things happen before their very eyes. But now they couldn't find water. And instead of remembering everything that God had just done in their lives, they began to be frustrated. They began to be stressed. They began to be bitter. And maybe, church, this is how we have been. We remember, we, we remember everything God did, and we're so grateful. We're so happy because we received a good a good miracle we received a relationship we received a, an increase in our finances we received the job that we wanted we all of these amazing things are happening in our lives but then another attack comes we get some bad news that there's a sickness in our family but then there's some turmoil in our marriage but then the people stop showing up for Sunday service but then the teachers start calling in and saying, I can't be there, I can't, I can't come, I have this and I have sports events and I have all of these other things. And so all these things begin to attack. And it seems like we forget what God just did. We forget how God had just brought everything that we needed. When we were in a difficult place, when we were in a hardship, God brought exactly what you needed. And then all of a sudden the attacks come again and we forget that God did it before. We forget that God brought what we needed before. And we begin to complain. The next trial comes and we begin to be discouraged. The next test comes and we begin to be upset and bitter. We don't get our way and we get mad at the church and we get mad at the leadership. We begin to make excuses again. We stop serving. We decide to step down from our positions. We stop showing up. We stop coming through. We stop paying our tithes and we stop showing gratitude unto God because we're being attacked again because we find ourselves in another storm. We begin to be like the people of Israel and we begin to come against the leadership. We begin to be bitter. They even named that body of water Mara, which meant bitter, and we even begin to name our circumstances. We begin to name what we're going through, and we begin to blame others. We begin to blame everybody else in our lives. But if we would lose, if we would stop focusing on what we're going through and start focusing on who can get us through it, then people of God, we would find ourselves being triumphant yet again. See, the people of God lost sight. I don't know if they thought that what they had received was all they were ever going to have. I don't know if they felt on the inside that the miracles that they had seen were all they were ever going to see. But I want you to know tonight that the God that I serve is a God of continual miracle. He's a God of continual blessings. He's a God that knows no limitation. And every time you need him, he'll come through over and over and over again. As many times as you need him, he'll come. As many breakthroughs as you need, he'll bring. As many financial blessings you need, he will supply. And maybe you're feeling in this moment, yes, God did so much in my life, and you feel like, Maybe there's no more. Maybe it's over. Maybe what I received is all I'm ever going to have, but I'm here to let you know tonight that the goodness of mer and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. The word of God tells us in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, that 
His goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. So that means that yes, I received breakthrough. Yes, I had blessings. Yes, I saw God heal. Yes, I saw him restore. Yes, I received great and powerful things in my life. But there's still so much more to come. And people of God, if you've been feeling discouraged, if you've been feeling down and defeated, the Lord wants you to know tonight there's more to come. There's more that I'm going to bring. I brought great things to you before. I supplied what you asked for before. I'm still the same God, and I can do it again. I'm still the same God, and I'll show up again. But he says, stay faithful. Stay encouraged. Don't stop serving because you don't see it. Don't go back to your old ways because you feel that it might not come. Don't stop showing gratitude just because you don't see it in front of you right now. Keep giving it your all. Verse 25 tells us that God made the water good. Hallelujah. Come on. God has the potential. God can make anything that is bad in your life and he can turn it around and make it for good. The word of God says that all things work for the good of those that love the Lord. God can make things good again for you. God can pick you up from where you've been and set your feet upon a rock again. God can bring the joy back into your spirit right now if you would ask. God can turn around that sorrow and bring joy back into your life. Continue to be faithful. Continue to trust him. There's still more to come. There's still another miracle that's coming your way. There's still more coming for your family. There's still more for you to expect to receive in your life. There's more that is about to be poured out even in this ministry. Do you remember when you started leader, teacher, camera director media department do you remember when we started and God began to send people God is saying your eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it entered into the heart of man what God is about to do don't focus on what you see. Don't focus on the people that are declining. Don't po focus on those that are saying they can't show up. God is saying, I'm about to bring another breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. God is saying, I'm about to bring another blessing. Don't focus on your bank account right now that is struggling and you may not have enough. God is saying, I'm about to bring a prosperity. I'm about to bring blessing into your life. But stay faithful. Stay faithful and stay focused and trust in me, says the Lord. There's still so much more to come, people of God. They had seen great and amazing things happen. But there was still more that they were about to experience. People of God, there is more that we're about to witness. There is more that we're about to experience. There's more that we're about to have. Right there where you are. Just as a sign, extend your hands right there and say, Lord, I know that there's more. Would you bring more? Would you give me more? Would you pour out more, God? Lord, I thank you for everything you've done. I thank you for all that I've had. I thank you for all the miracles that you've brought. But Lord, I know that there's more. Would you give me more? Say, give me more, Lord. I want to see more. I want to experience more. I want to see it again. I want to see breakthrough again. I want to see blessings again. 
Lord, we want to see the church filled again. We want to see the children begin to preach and prophesy again. Lord, we want to see you pouring out of your spirit again. We want to feel fresh anointing again. Would you bring it again? Would you give me more? Would you give me more, Lord? Whatever it is that you need right now, church. Just begin to ask. Say, Lord, give me more. Lord, I know you gave me a raise when I needed it, but Lord, would you give me more? understand something tonight. I want you to see something in this story. God didn't move and change when the people began to complain. He moved and he changed the waters when a man began to call out unto him. So church, we need to stop being a complaining people a discouraged people, a bitter people. But we need to be a people that call out unto God and ask him for a move. And we call out unto God and we ask him for a change. God didn't turn the waters because they complained, but he turned the waters because Moses Begin to cry out and say, God, would you turn the waters for us? So he's not going to move because you complain. He's not going to move because you're angry. He's not going to move because you threaten to leave the church. He's going to move because you call out and you say, God, would you turn the waters? He's going to move because you call out and you say, God, would you move from me? He's going to change the waters because you say, God, would you turn it around? Would you turn it around for me? He's going to move when you call out and you say, Lord, I need more. Would you give me more? He's going to bring another miracle when you say, Lord, I need more. I need more, Jesus. Get desperate tonight, church. There's a miracle in the world. I believe it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, there's revival in the church. Jesus, I pray that you would give us an attitude of gratitude. Forgive us, Lord, if we've been a complaining people. Forgive us, Lord, if we've threatened to leave your kingdom. 
Forgive us, Father God, if we've backed down and we've got let discouragement or let frustration, Father God, hold us back from continuing in your kingdom. And help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be a people that would call upon you to find strength and to find peace and to trust you and knowing that you still have so much more. The Lord wants you to know tonight he still has more for you. He still has more that he's going to do in your life. He's working it out. He's moving. Thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that this word would continue to penetrate in your heart. And that you would be blessed even as you rest tonight. Sweet sleep and good rest over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And that you would see the miracles and the blessings of God pour over your life and over your family. We love you on behalf of our pastors. Have a wonderful week. And may the Lord richly bless you. We love you. <laughs>